So hey Tony, we're here on the floor in the media booth. We are literally on the NAM floor. Yes. And you guys don't have a booth this year, so we don't. But I did see you, so I kind of pulled you in, and uh, we've got. The, how do you say it? Sorry. Coupons. Coupons. Yes. Of course, we had a modular synthesizer in the trunk of the car, so uh, we ran back out to the Make Noise Obil and grabbed it and brought it inside here. This is the Quad Peak Animation System. It's a uh, quad core stereo filter. It has uh, low pass outputs, band pass outputs, high pass outputs, and a new filter type we're calling Smile Pass. Right now you're listening to the low pass outputs. Um, I have the high pass patch, but we're not using it. And we're also uh, we're using the stereo VCA at the input to uh, bring a very simple square wave in. And that sequence is being driven by uh, Rene Tempe combo here. And you'll notice there, it sounds like there's a little bit of an echo on the sound. And what we're, the way we're doing that is we're using one of our uh, mysterious tick tick inputs here to excite the sound at a rate that is uh, three times that of the sequence and you end up with this sort of quasi echo effect so um, that's like a, a strike input so. it's yeah it, it is sort of like a strike input it's a little different because it affects a bunch of different parts of the circuit uh, simultaneously some of them are items that cannot be reached from the front panel others are reachable by the front panel but it just hammers them so um, I'm gonna take this sequence out for now and give you uh, the all-important filter sweep. Uh, so here we're in low pass. And the thing about the QPOS is that it has, uh, it's a quad core filter. So there is four state variable filters that are uh, operating simultaneously. And when we were developing it, the key was how to present it in a way that would not dominate your modular system. Uh, so we didn't want to have it just loaded with I.O. and knobs in such a way that it really just became like having four filter modules. Instead, we wanted it to work together, a collaborative effort. These four filter cores uh, are working collaboratively, uh, collaboratively as a uh, single filter module. Um, so the cutoff here, the frequency control. Uh, that's going to drive all four of these filter cores. The way we handle the uh, independent control of them is with this radiate left and radiate right. Right now we're using the filter in a mono to stereo configuration. As I turn up the cutoff, you'll hear the sound and now on the left channel we'll get the filter cores being spaced apart from each other. And now on the right channel. And what's kind of beautiful about that is that because the filter is highly exponential, depending upon the cutoff frequency here, uh, the velocity that these uh, individual cutoff frequencies travel at, uh, it can be very different. Uh, basically, as it's lower, they seem to move at similar velocities. As the uh, frequency of the cutoff increases, the velocities increase until they finally sort of coalesce into total brightness at the, the maximum. resonance a little bit, get a little more dramatic effect. And so that's a, a pretty a pretty pleasing thing. Uh, and, and so that's a combination of, of both the stereo spacing, so the, the difference between the left and right channels, but then also there's the independent uh, differences. So the two cores on the left are being spaced apart from each other as well as they are being spaced apart from the cores on the right, which are also being spaced apart from each other. And the net effect of that is that you can get some highly animated sounds, uh, both per channel, left and right, and then also animated uh, against each other, left and right. So you end up with stereo spacing and uh, cutoff peak animation, essentially. And I'll patch a, an LFO here so you can hear some of that. So right now, I'm going to be modulating just the right side. Oh, I'm sorry, the left side. And uh, 
pretty dramatic modulation. And there's a normalization here, so I can also modulate the right side with that same control voltage. Again, trying to keep this module integrated into the system instead of dominating your system. Now, something else you can do is run a completely independent modulation source into the right side. It's a really nice way of not getting stereo width but still tying the frequencies together. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So it really kind of it really kind of tidies it up into a package that's uh, quite manageable. Um, in addition to that, the the Q is uh, is also somewhat unique in that it is very um, at high Q settings it's very underdamped, and uh, at extremely low Q settings it's highly non-resonant, which if you're using the low pass output can give it a bit of a uh, an LPG kind of sound. And I'm gonna create a short kind of plucky function here with maths. And right now I have it set so that the, I'm gonna set the radiates so they're all the way uh, together. So now the, peak, the, the peaks are gonna be very closely spaced. And I have the cutoff all the way down. And if I, if I uh, hit this with a very short, highly exponential envelope, I get a sort of uh, quasi-LPG sound. That's a good kick drum. Yeah, it could be, absolutely. I can also space those a little bit. So one channel's a little brighter than the other. And of course, all of that's uh, fully voltage controllable. Now, that's the highly non-resonant behavior of, of this filter. Um, there's also a highly resonant behavior, uh, underdamped resonance, in fact. So at higher Q settings, you end up with something that rings a bit. And I can give you a quick example of that. I have a drum loop that I'm going to patch into the mono input here. And I'm going to give you the high pass output in mono as well. So one thing about this is it does mono to mono, mono to stereo, stereo to stereo, and stereo to mono. So there's normalization, so that's all set up. All you have to do is patch the cables how you want to. Um, when you're doing uh, mono to stereo, you are creating a, a stereo image of that mono signal, highly useful. Equally useful, especially in a system with a mono input on our herb you can go stereo to mono, and that combines all four peaks to a single channel. And because the filtering has already borked your phase relationship to some degree, you really don't have to worry about uh, phase canceling so much when you're doing something like that. Uh, it's highly useful for a patch to run it in parallel as well. So if you had your stereo output that could run straight to your mixer, you could take that stereo into the QPOS, sum it to mono through the filters, and then into the herb verb, set mix full wet, blend that back in with your original channel for some parallel processing. So that's also a possibility. Uh, so I'm going to bring in this drum loop right now with no resonance. Uh, kind of hear pretty basic drum loop. And I'm going to turn up the cue a little bit. And then I'm going to turn the frequency up just a bit. And you can hear the filter being excited by the percussion loop. Yeah, that's made that kick massive. Exactly. And then I can space the peaks a bit using the radiate controls. And then there's another trick I can do. I got this CV out from the Morphogene, which is an envelope follower. I'm gonna pass that to my resonance because you know, I can turn my Q up really high and it can just ring almost continuously. If I use the uh, CV out from the Morphogene, I can sort of momentarily boost the Q. And 
then I can also patch a sequence. I have a sequence that's being driven by that same envelope follower uh, on the X channel of this Rene. I'm going to patch that into this radiate right. So I'm sequencing the radiate to create a sort of uh, a melody from the drum loop as well. That's, that's really nice. It's almost kind of um, like resonator kind of vibe. Of yes. Like yeah. yeah, it's highly underdamped at high Q settings, uh, so that you get a sort of ringing. It doesn't self-oscillate, which is actually quite useful in patches like this, be because you never reach a point where the filter is overtaking the signal, the uh, signal you have patched at the input, which is really nice. So you, you can just slam that Q and still maintain the integrity of the input signal. The uh, QPOS is 18 HP, um, the cost is $379 US dollars. Um, it consumes quite a bit of current and the reason is because there is a, a hot mess of analog electronics inside this thing. So it is uh, hovering around 160 milliamps plus 12, 190 milliamps minus 12. Um, so yeah. It gets a decent power supply. Oh uh, yeah, and also uh, it, it gets it gets warm. Oh, Tony, thank you very much for yes. uh, taking the time out and uh, coming down here on the floor. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for uh, giving us a little coverage.